All right, joining me once again here on the Matthew Filipovich Show is Antonia Juhas. Antonia is a writer, an author, an activist, an oil policy and energy analyst. She's the author of many books, including Black Tide, The Devastating Impact of the Gulf Oil Spill, all of which and more you can find at black-tide.org. You can also find her on Twitter at Antonia Juhas. Antonia, thank you so much for being on the show again. Thanks for having me. Great to be back on. So, Antonia, you have an amazing new article currently at The Atlantic entitled The New War for Afghanistan's Untapped Oil. You were recently over in Afghanistan. Tell us, what exactly did you find when you were over there? Yeah, I was there for three weeks in November, and I traveled across the northern areas of Afghanistan over to the west um, in Herat, and I was essentially following a map that had originally been prepared by the Soviets in the 1970s and since uh, dusted off and redone by the Americans um, around 2006. And it's a map of Afghanistan's um, oil and natural gas holdings. And Afghanistan does have oil and natural gas, uh, not nearly of the caliber of that other country uh, we were at war with, <laughs> Iraq. Um, right. But it does have holdings. And they, they haven't, they, the vast majority have not been developed. And so the U.S. Pentagon is leading the effort to try to facilitate the movement um, largely of, of Western oil companies, but international oil companies into Afghanistan. And I was there to find out, you know, where is this oil? Who lives where it's located? What do they know about the fact that it's being developed? And uh, what is what is happening with the U.S. Pentagon's efforts? Um, and what I found, uh, I guess the most important thing, and it's, this is what I wrote about for The Atlantic, was a surprising continual series of events, which was that even though I was supposed to be in the safest part of Afghanistan, I kept having these uh, very close near misses with Taliban attacks, including one deadly attack. And these are in areas where the Taliban are not supposed to be um, in large numbers and certainly not conducting daytime attacks, yet they were. And as this continually happened to me, Personally, I began to notice that they seemed to be targeting oil and gas infrastructure, and uh, they were essentially following the same map that I was following. And I started conducting interviews with the Pentagon and with leading Afghan NGOs who concurred that, you know, essentially, and this is my analysis of their what they told me, as the U.S. government has increasingly focused on this sector, so too have the Taliban, and oil and gas has become really a a flame to which the Taliban have been drawn and they are attacking and that's creating, in my mind, uh, much less stability for Afghanistan. So rather than oil and gas be something that might bring more economic stability to the country, that seems to me to be creating even more uh, volatility. Um, yeah, and, and the article is really just phenomenal, phenomenal, Antonia. And, and it just, you, when you go from place to place, there's incident after incident where you go to talk to uh, one of the governors in one of the regions and regions of Afghanistan, and you, you're you can't, you're not allowed to talk because there's a potential attack or there an attack actually did happen uh, just 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 nearby. Correct? Yeah. So um, in a governor in Faryab province, I was waiting in his office and waiting for some time to talk to him. He's the governor of an area that has uh, very large natural gas holdings. And while we were waiting in his office, his secretary came up and said that there had been uh, an incident, that somebody had been killed, and I saw uh, his guards running out to the road, and what we later learned was that the head of security for this governor had been killed, um, and they told us by the Taliban, and just down the road from where we were waiting. Um, and then as we you know, took off uh, and sort of were running to make sure we weren't in the net of the Taliban, um, I wrote that my guy told me that I was to uh, pretend to be his deaf mute mother if we were caught and to throw my camera out the window. And that was the first wow. of uh, several other near misses. And so, I mean, so basically what what you have found is that Despite reports that the the northern part of Afghanistan is is in a, in is stable, 
it's really not at all. And and ju- and just the fact that that we are now looking to send in these international oil companies to 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 you know start doing business in Afghanistan. That 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 is really it, the the northern part is really flaring up. Well, that, that's essentially what you found, correct? I mean, I wouldn't say that it's. Um unstable. I think what's very interesting about going to a country at war is that I think what one imagines is uh, everywhere is a battlefield. That's not what it's like. Pretty much everywhere Mm -hmm. people are living their regular lives, and then every once in a while a horrible, deadly event happens. And what's happening in the north is that where where the area had been for many, many, many years, largely Taliban-free, that is no longer the case. And one reason why is, I think, because of this oil and gas, the effort to develop the oil and gas. That's one reason. And then the other reason is simply the Taliban are having a resurgence in Afghanistan. Um, there is a you know, much greater likelihood right now than I think in, in years that a civil war is going to break out in Afghanistan. There are regional rivalries that are being inflamed. And there are the Taliban. And what I, you know, my conclusion is that one of the things that is inflaming this situation is the attempt in the middle of a war to develop a resource which is already itself quite volatile and tends to attract violence, and that's oil and natural gas. I'm talking to Antonia Yuhas. Uh, you can always find her on Twitter, at Antonia Yuhas. So I, I guess the, the, the bigger question is, if that is sort of the reality of Afghanistan and the reality that we're going to be that that, that I guess we but that that oil companies and the Afghani government is going to be facing if they do try to exploit this oil out of out, out of the ground what does that actually mean uh, as far as I mean obviously the country would become more destabilized but does that mean that we would be sending in more troops to protect these oil companies like what let's talk about some of the big picture aspects of what this actually might mean uh, in the future for Afghanistan and for our involvement there yeah no it's a it's a very troubling potential outcome. You know, frankly, I think the Obama administration wants to get out of Afghanistan. I think that very strongly. I don't think it would have entered this war uh, had it been in power uh, in 2001. And I think it's quite interested, his administration, in ending our presence there, both our private military contractors and our military. But that, in some ways, is easier said than done, and there's a lot of forces acting on this government to keep the U.S. military there. And the debate that's happening right now between Ahmed Karzai and President Obama is, will U.S. soldiers and contractors be given immunity from Afghan law? That did not happen in Iraq, and all of our soldiers, and I believe the vast majority of our private military contractors, came back to the United States. And if immunity is granted, the door, which Karzai says that he's going to try and make happen, the door is then open to keep U.S. troops and private military contractors there longer in Afghanistan. In Iraq, U.S. companies, Western companies went in, and they got a lot of what they wanted out of that war. They were shut out of Iraq before the war, and now they're in Iraq. And you've got Exxon and BP and Shell. They came in when the the foreign military was still there. And there was a sense of, quote, unquote, stability for them to start their operations. Right now, there just isn't that stability in Afghanistan. So while U.S. companies and Western companies have certainly been interested in operating in Afghanistan, none of them are there. And I think the primary reason is there just isn't enough stability. And if U.S. forces leave, I think that makes it that much less likely that they will be there. If they go in now, or if they go in soon, and they start producing, there will be a lot of pressure, I think, to keep U.S. forces and private military contractors in Afghanistan. And I think for those of us who think that it's a much better idea for those forces to leave, this is not a good time for Western companies to be setting up shop in Afghanistan. And um, I think it's, you know, a problematic course to be following. And that said, you know, I I can talk for a very long time about why I think developing oil and gas is not a good idea. But for those (laughs) who think it's a good idea... Afghanistan has its own trained oil and energy experts. It has 
national companies. It has the Afghan National Gas Company. It has the Afghan Oil and Gas Survey. And there are many people within Afghanistan who argue, okay, you know, yeah, this is a good idea. Let's develop our oil and gas, but give us money so that we can do it. Uh, We'll do it ourselves. We don't need these international oil companies coming in. And that would be another route uh, to to take if if one did think that it's good for Afghanistan to develop this resource. To actually have it be an Afghani company and Afghani citizens and the country itself actually getting the profits from this oil and not some multinational corporation that's coming in and, and, and taking it out of the ground. Well, yeah, and just the, you know, the lightning rod that is created by the U.S. Pentagon running around Afghanistan trying to open it up to Western oil companies. There's plenty of people who, who wouldn't, who don't, who, for whom that doesn't rub them very well. And <laughs> many of them are violent. And there are people who we don't want to be rubbing the wrong way. Um, and, you know, that they're not operating in some, you know, random country. They're operating, it's the Pentagon, which is very odd in itself, in a war zone, in a U.S. occupation. Uh, you know, to me, it's just a recipe for disaster and that's you know some of what i found on my on my trip